using both manuals or staying on the, on the brake? Um, well, it's not um, concrete. Okay. But I, I think also, it might be nice. You, you could go back and forth if you want. Possibly. Okay, this should work for you. Okay. It's not the biggest sound on the organ, but it's really clean and clear. It works really well. Okay. I'm David Rhine. I'm the organist here at St. Mary's in Greenville. Uh, we have a Reuter pipe organ, it's electro-pneumatic, from 1990. It's a relatively small instruments, 20, 20 ranks of pipes. Uh, it is more successful than you might think, knowing that it's only 20 ranks, because there is some unification and it's actually spread over 30 different stops and couplers. So it's more functional and much more um, uh, changeable than you might think for such a small instrument. Uh, and again, the room here is, is so good that helps to make the instrument sound even better than it might otherwise sound. Uh, on the swell division, which is the division that's enclosed, it's the division behind behind the swell shades that you can actually crescendo and decrescendo. Um, there are several different kinds of pipes, uh, typical of a pipe organ. Uh, the flutes at various octaves. And they're quite nice in this space. Uh, there are two different ranks making up those three stops. Uh, there are also two string sounds. Uh, pipes that are designed to sound like orchestral strings when they're put together. You have uh, violone, and then when you couple this with a celeste, which is tuned slightly out of tune, just slightly sharp, you get this uh, shimmery sound that you would get not unlike a string section from an orchestra. Just that little bit of out of tuneness. Again, it's behind expression shades so that you have some dynamic control over those, over those ranks. Uh, so flutes and strings, there's one principle which is primary organ sound on the swell. It's very nice, very warm, open sound. But it's pitched actually an octave higher so that it has quite a bit of brightness if you add that to the flutes. It adds quite a bit of brightness to the sound. The only two reeds of the uh, organ are on this division as well. There's a softer oboe-like reed, which is actually quite nice. Um, very uh, English in some ways. It's very useful uh, in combination as well as by itself. It's also a big trumpet on the swell at 16, 8, and 4 foot pitch. Uh, it's very big, perhaps too big for the instrument, but it certainly does add a bit of fire to the instrument. And when coupled at the 16 and 4, it's very big and very bright. Uh, again, perhaps too big for the organ. However, when it's brought down to the pedal, it works very well. 
you'd never play it by itself like that, but it, with the full ensemble. Um, works very well in the pedal. Uh, it's big enough to be effective in the pedal. So that's the swell division, the division that's under expression. Then on the opposite side of the window is the great organ, which is all exposed, which means what you hear is what you get, and you can't uh, change the volume. The principle on this is, again, very nice. It's very warm. It's got a little bit of shimmer to it so that it sounds great with voices, and it really helps leading voices in singing. Uh, you can couple that to the with the forefoot octave, which is an octave higher, the same kind of stop an octave higher. And you start to get the characteristic organ sound. And again, there's a two-foot version of that, which is an octave higher than the four. And then a four-rank mixture on top of that, which adds the sparkle that it needs to uh, include on top of the eight, four, and two. So now you're getting that traditional pipe organ sound. There are a couple small flutes on the grate. One is characteristic to the grate and only uh, playable from the grate. It's a little darker sounding than the uh, swell flutes. And then you can play also one of the swell flutes on the grate and the gr uh, swell trumpet from the grate as well. So that gives it quite a bit of flexibility, more so than you might think from a two-manual instrument. Um, it's, a, it's an American classic style, as most American-made organs are. So it's not designed to, um, the European organs are designed for beauty for each stop, and each stop having a unique characteristic. The American organs are designed to fit together. And while each stop may not have its own unique characteristic, when you put them all together, it makes sense. And one of the nice things about this organ, first of all, it's very stable. It's a nice, stable instrument. It doesn't go out of tune too often, although in today's heat, that trumpet's a little out. Um, but it holds together pretty well. And when you uh, put everything together, um, it works. <laughs> for leading congregational singing, works very well for organ literature, uh, and also for accompanying the choir. So all together it works very, very well. Uh, there's a little flute on the swell that's very nice uh, for little renaissance effects. Uh, works very well. Or with um, a tremolo sound, a little bit of flexible wind gives it a little bit of more singing quality. some very nice stops on this organ. Um, that pretty much takes you through the, the entire compass of the organ. Um, in addition, there, there's the one little specialty sound, which is a Zimbelstern, uh, which is very useful and very big. Um, I could have used it in that piece that I played. I can't get it off now. Not perfect. What else can I tell you? What else do you think would be helpful? Um, I think that was, that was pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Um, so that, that flute with the, the tremolo. It's a very nice sound. Yeah, I use it. Um, early German chorale preludes sometimes require th that sound. It's a very nice sound. Yeah, it's a very nice sound. And the flutes work very well together. Um, so you have a contrast. So if I had something with an echo, this would work. It works very nicely too. So there's a lot. There are a lot of nice features about it, and considering it's so small, it's relatively flexible. Um, let's see. Oh, great! Thanks yeah. so much. Okay. Yeah, that's perfect. Now, before you get up.
have a short piece to play. It's called Song of Joy by Jean Langlais, who was a French composer um, at Saint Clotilde in Paris, uh, and wrote these pieces. The Song of Joy is one of three pieces that he wrote right after World War II. Song of Peace, Song of Joy, and Song of Sorrow. Longley was a blind organist, so he developed all of his musical skills uh, as a blind student and professional. <laughs> 